As a wildlife photographer, we tend to seek out the wildest places. But even in those extreme locations, the heavy hand of mankind is sadly always present. The challenges that nature faces are everywhere and they're almost impossible to keep out of our photos. Wildlife Photographer of the Year is a window into our changing world. Over the last 59 years, with thousands and thousands of images, we have seen the change into a reportage of biodiversity loss, impact of climate change on the natural world. My whole relationship with coral reefs changed when I witnessed mass coral bleaching for the first time. I think up until that point, I just felt like the grass in our fields, it would be there forever. This was the impact of the earth warming up because of human activity. And if we didn't stop that, this ecosystem was gonna be rubbed out. And that's flavored my photography ever since. It pulls people in by being hopefully an attractive picture, hopefully an interesting picture. And then as people see this interest, they see those relationships and they see what's at stake. We are losing the species in the world's oceans at a very fast rate, faster than we can actually identify the new species to the world. Corals are on the front line of the climate crisis. They are the first indicators that we're in some kind of catastrophe, a planetary emergency. I have dedicated my career to document a wide range of environmental issues, especially the wildfire crisis in the Amazon and Pantanal. This photograph captures an adult female jaguar. Her paws have been grievously burned during a series of devastating fires that ravaged a third of Pantanal, the world's largest tropical wetland, in 2020. Taking the picture, I found myself so close to one of the most powerful creatures in the world and there were no barriers separating us for a few seconds. It was a very emotional moment because you can recognize uh, the pain in the eyes of the animal. I hope it may serve as a stark reminder of the impact that we all are having on our ecosystem. I met a bobcat who was denning underneath the house I was staying in. But the more I learned about the gregarious little creatures hiding under the house, the more I was troubled. This wild family that I'd completely fallen in love with are considered vermin in Texas. History has shown us that humans are really good at killing. Bobcats, coyotes, rattlesnakes, foxes, all of them are fair game. They can be killed 24-7, 365 days a year by any lawful means on private property. When we turn killing into an industry like these contests and festivals, and we ignore the state of the planet, we very well could be pushing these species to a tipping point. We need to care because when we lose our predators, we throw ecological balance into chaos. This picture was shot in my birthplace, Chennai in India, which used to be so green and pitched off for many migratory birds like flamingos, pelicans every year. But as years pass, the bird numbers have decreased. Out of curiosity, I just wanted to check what's happening in that place with my drone. I took the first picture in 2020, where you can see a patch of garbage surrounded with green. But you see the picture which I shot in 2022, one can hardly see any green. That shows how fast the marshland has been destroyed in the span of just two years. 3,500 tons of garbage is being dumped in the middle of the city every day. As a photographer, seeing all this destruction, it makes me feel bad and ashamed to know how we are taking nature for granted. We are destroying the earth, mostly for our needs. We keep taking resources from earth without thinking about the impact that will have on us. We need future positive, we need nature positive methods to remove the, those resources from Earth without destroying the Earth. 
At two and a half miles wide and more than half a mile deep, the Bingham Canyon Copper Mine in Utah, near Salt Lake City, is the largest excavation on Earth. Flying over it, nothing prepared me for the immense scale of the mine. It was an awe-inspiring sight, but also a terrifying one. My hope is that this image and others like it can serve as a kind of cautionary tale that we as a society now have the technology and the power to utterly destroy large sections of the landscape. The real question though is, do we have the wisdom to preserve what is left of the natural world for future generations? I do have reasons to be hopeful because I've seen those reasons firsthand. I've seen parts of the ocean that have been properly protected and I've seen marine life bounce back because nature has that resilience. It just needs us to take our foot off their jugular.